All right. So I'd like to call the Technology Advisory Board meeting for the town of Grand Island to order. Um, as a non-voting person, I am unsure if the meeting minutes were circulated from Ron. Is anybody aware? They were. Like they went out. Yep. Yeah. So I guess we can make a motion to accept the meeting minutes from the previous Tech Advisory Board meeting. So moved. Um, um, And I just realized without Ron being here, I will. You, uh, I was going to say, who's writing it down? I'm yeah. trying. So who was moved and who seconded? I think Jim and then Taylor seconded. Okay. All right. Okay, so the first thing I want to discuss is the resignation of Jim Watts. Uh, he's been an asset to the Tech Advisory Board for almost eight years. I would like to thank him for his time and efforts that he's put in. And I would like to put a certificate of appreciation in at the next town board meeting, thanking him for his time. In the I, would sec I, would, I would, if you want a motion, I'm gonna make that motion to move forward. Sure. I'll second, second, that. second that, yeah. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've been with Jim from the beginning here. Uh, I was here before Jim, but uh, the bottom line is he's been a great asset to the organization and he has given a great deal of time and effort to our group. So my feeling is he's going to be missed uh, as a member. Uh, he does feel that the younger dudes that are on this board right now, uh, uh, which I'll, I will agree with him, uh, are far more superior at what's going on in today in technology. Uh, but legacy knowledge is always powerful uh, when you put that together with talent. Uh, but we're going to miss him, and I appreciate the time he spent with us, and I, I'm going to miss his, his company. Me too. So I have Jim Sharp motion, and can I have a second? Yes, I'll second. So I have three seconds, but I apologize, Dan, you're the loudest. Maybe you I already wrote my own name in the notes for the first time around. <laughs> oh, are you... Dan, are you taking notes right now? I'm trying. Okay, I'll do them too, and we can if we miss anything, we'll. I'll do okay. Them. So, with the absence of a chairman for this board, we would need to vote and pick a new chair. Um, do we have anybody interested? I know uh, Ron said he would be interested. He would be one of the people interested. I'll, I'll move Ron's name forward to be the chair. I have a motion. I'll second if he wants to do it. <laughs> okay, so we got the motion by Jim. And second by Spinella. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nice. Oh, so one opposed. All right, did I hear nice? We doesn't matter. We have a vote of Ron as a new chair. Congratulations, Ron Stipp. So the sad news with the absence of Ron as the chair, we now need someone to take notes. Uh, Dan, would you move forward to do that? I would rather not. I'm not uh, probably great at it, but uh, <laughs> so I, I would I would vote. Hopefully, someone else, not me. Um, okay. I'd like to stay as the as the vice chair, and then you know, new secretary for that. I think. Oh, then sense. we need to definitely uh, nominate a vice chair. So I'll, right. I'll nominate Dan just to be the uh, vice chair. Oh, thanks. <laughs> If someone else wants to do it, that's fine with me too. Is anybody else interested? Mm -hmm. Well, first I have a motion to prefer Dan's name. Do I have a second? Sure, I'll second it. Do we do we need to do the vice? I don't think so. <laughs> no, I was but, gonna say Dan's the vice but, chair. He's, but, he's yeah, he is yeah but I spot. think Ron though, Ron's got his hands full. He's going to need a partner. <laughs> yeah, and Dan will be it, and he will make yes, a great will. partner. But yeah, we do need to to replace. That's required for a vice chair then. Yeah, Ron. Ron was co-chair, 
Um, yeah. And then you step back to secretary. So we need, you definitely need to a new secretary. Okay. Yes, we do. I was going to say you're already vice chair. So. Right. So yeah, I'm so sure we, that's up for a vote at some point soon, but. Um, Taylor? Yeah, Would I mean, consider? if nobody else will, I'll step, I'll step into it. <laughs> Taylor, I think you're you just I'll, yeah. I'll I'll second that motion. So Taylor. Thank you, Taylor. Yeah, I've taken notes a couple times in the past as a you stand in for Ron. So I was gonna say they were amazing. I didn't want to say that. So it will be easy to uh read. Okay. So all in favor of Taylor as new secretary. Aye. Aye. Okay. Everybody except Taylor. Is, is that is that starting right now? Like I should go back and I'll, I'll do this. We'll, we'll give no. you two hours to head start. <laughs> I appreciate <laughs> it. We'll do the next meeting. All right. So now that we have the new chairs, um, let's go over some stuff we have going on at town hall. So with this new advisory board lack of liaison um, scenario, I'm looking at some conference room kits. Um, I'd like dedicated software. Um, it's more about the software than the hardware, um, but I would like dedicated software where I can walk into a conference room and join a scheduled meeting very is easily by clicking on a tablet, join meeting. I know Cisco has the room kits. I know Logitech has the rally. Um, I am open. Um, I've been in recent discussion with a vendor for Cisco products. Um, I started looking at Logitech. However, I cannot get a vendor on the phone. Um, Logitech has their own sales department and they called me and instantly disconnect every time they call. I've called this salesperson back five times and left voicemails. I've responded to emails. Um, it's very frustrating with Logitech, so I moved on to Cisco. They've been the absolute opposite. They've worked around my schedule and they've been great. However, this project is most likely going to exceed $20,000. So therefore, if we did not want to do the process when something that expensive an RFP, where we actually have to draft up a, almost like a contract stating that we're looking at this and we'll go open to public bid, very long, tedious process. However, if that's what we have to do, that's what we have to do. Prior to this, I would like to confirm if there's any, um, you know, state contracts or any uh, products that are open from public bid. Therefore, we would have permission to go ahead and purchase this. Um, that said, is anybody on the tech border or is anybody aware of any type of conference room kits that I may have not, not have mentioned? Again, I know of Cisco and Logitech. I know Google does have one. But from what I'm told, they would not. It would not be the correct um, uh, solution for a small four-room conference kit. They had their licensing, and it's called their suite, is uh, very expensive to the point. We, I don't think we would want to look. But maybe I'm incorrect. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, I don't know if anybody is aware. We use Mitel phones at school. Um, and they do have something called a my collab or something of the similar idea. I think everybody since COVID pretty much has come out with something, a virtual conference room idea. Um, I don't know a lot about it. We didn't we didn't put them in at school at all. But I'm wondering if it was something that we also had. If, it, if we could do any kind of sharing of devices to help get that 20,000 down and maybe, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I do. However, sadly, I think to do it right, I don't see a world where we don't exceed that. So the cheapest option for Logitech um, are going to run us around 4,000 a room. The Cisco product, was seven discounted down to 3,800. That would only be viable for two of the conference rooms. The elephant in the room when it comes to the large price is going to be the uh, courtroom. Having a camera on a gimbal, having speakers, uh, a minimum of five microphones, 
you need a camera that it's going to be mounted on the back wall, so it does need to be a good camera. Um, it's a daunting task. Again, I, I have worked with the vendor and we've gotten it anywhere between 17 and 22,000. Um, we have to think about licensing as well. Uh, we currently, you know, have a license with the Zoom and so it's being on a Zoom meeting. Um, so Cisco WebEx, Microsoft Teams, uh, figure out the compatibility. Um, this is called, it's actually called a conference room kit. If you guys could look into that. I know the town board and a lot of myself would be appreciative about that. How many, how many rooms? So we are looking to do um, Pete's office, the conference room that was the town boardroom. Yeah. Those two are mm -hmm. considered a small to medium room. So in the um, Cisco world, the room kit mini was applicable. So whatever is comparable. The larger conference room, which sadly is used more because it's larger, it's in the far back next to code enforcement. That would be the next um, lineup. I have dimensions I can give, and then the courtroom. So we have three conference rooms, essentially, in one courtroom. The conference rooms run 12 by 18, 12 by 20, 30. By the, I would have to check my notes on what the larger conference room is and what the courtroom is, but I do know the smaller ones are twelve by eighteen and twelve by twenty. Yeah, but I believe the um even the largest of the of the smaller rooms was still able to be handled effectively by one of the minis due to the resolution and the ability to. Joe, I, yeah. I gave them the dimensions, and they said the mini wouldn't do well. So the issue with the Cisco product is they're not modular. So if you look, they do have a room kit that does have a modular option. Um, the comparable would be the Logitech Rally. So you have a camera that does not have, so I apologize, I'm take a step back. What these all look like, they look like a sound bar and they have a camera in the middle. And that's connected, you know, either, either wireless or wired to a tablet that's on the table and the software is running and you can click join. You can also click record and you can also click go live. So it is very user friendly. Um, again, we have these at our work. I had them at my previous work. Um, so they're great because, again, with the new structure of the advisory boards, it's very friendly for users to come in and use them as well as they are great for modern times. Um, even today, I had a meeting at 2 o'clock and I go to the conference room and there's papers strewn everywhere because somebody was using it and it took you know 15 minutes of sort of a resident's time of this person to clean up. What I'm alluding to is booking conference rooms. It also will have that ability. We'll have a tablet on the outside of the door that will be green if the conference room's available or red if it's not. And again, booking it, you can then say, get out of my conference room. So again, just trying to modernize the whole structure of conference rooms. It's just something that you know I, I think is, is actually needed. Um, it's more for the availability of recording and holding these meetings. Um, I don't think we've been able to start a town board meeting at exactly eight o'clock once this year due to technical issues. It's always 707, 705. So this just fixes that. Right. So uh, again, Rob, go ahead, Jim. Rob, I have a question for Robin. Robin, this yeah. is a considered a distance learning lab. So are you, is anybody at BOCES uh, done their work on this for helping school districts that you, you're aware of? The, so the whole idea of distance learning labs has uh, kind of faded into into virtual learning with the kids right. having Chromebooks in front of them. So they don't, yeah, okay. they don't really right. do that anymore. So not doing the motion detective cameras and all that kind of stuff for the right. mics. And, yeah, okay. no, we've had a couple of teachers. It's funny, but when we were remote, we had a couple of teachers buy the cameras that would follow them and they would, they'd put it in their class room but there was not uh, not enterprise kind of okay. device it right. was just a, yeah a little thing they bought on amazon yeah i remember so, i you know i did the labs in air yeah. falls and stuff like that in the old days with the studio and, and the uh, camera that tracked you and the mic that turned on the camera right to the mic all that kind of stuff yeah so, it's, it's even said i've seen the ones that that christian described that's basically a sound bar with a camera in the middle um They've gotten much, much simpler. Like that is basically what it is, except for your 
courtroom. Where you're yeah, so that's what, what I was going yeah. on, uh, going to explain. So yeah, so typically yeah. it works is you got a small bar, a big bar, a massive mm -hmm. bar, but yeah. it, you can't do a bar. So you have an external camera that's mounted on a gimbal. You have speakers here. We would have microphones. Um, this technology is crazy. It's like they do 150,000 computations per second to make sure it's got the best audio and not picking up reverb. And also it's not picking up its own audio in the speaker. It's fantastic. It's really great. Um, is that Cisco? Is that Cisco? Yeah, because one of the issues uh, we had previously a few years ago, the town looked at it, getting a new PA system and they had Jackson Music come in and they stated that, you know, this is 10 years ago or however many long without software, they, they essentially stated, um, you will pick up your own audio and it will just be an infinite echo where this will yeah. fix that. However, and we need to take some things into consideration. Uh, what about hearing impaired? We have to take that into consideration. Mm -hmm. so we have to have some type of headphone option. Uh, so uh, what do we it's, and they also have uh, one of the other nice features is you've got individual mute buttons and you can set like uh, from the control panel, you can actually set the distance of audio. So if I'm here and I got don't want to hear further than two feet out, I can set it for two foot. So like when people are at the mic in the front of the up on the stage there, they can not be heard by everybody and they can mute their own so that they have to talk amongst themselves for something mm -hmm. that doesn't need to be amongst the group. Um, yeah. They can do that also. Okay. Yeah. One of the issues um also that we have a courtroom outside of hearing uh impaired would be hearing uh this type of system does not replace a pa system so the speakers would only be playing what somebody is saying on a uh, uh like on a call so i didn't know if one of the um, solutions could be is as of right now a town board member will log into zoom and then start the meeting and do all that from their laptop what if they just logged into Zoom and their computer had a wireless speaker and so a Bluetooth, so the output of Town Hall was played, you know, in the back facing the, the crowd, the audience? Um, I don't know. So, but I do yeah. know that we do need a PA system as well. Um, now, I'm not saying the word gimbal a lot. It's cool. I'm saying it because courts does not like the idea of a hard mountain mounted camera facing them at all times. They do like an ROK with a camera on a gimbal facing down that will show them that that camera is not recording because you cannot have recording in the courtroom when the court is going on. Uh, so are no. you talking, when you're talking about the system itself for recording, you are talking about it being broadcasted out or being captured to be seen at a later date, right? And then having people that are at home that want to uh, phone in to be seen and to be heard. That's all part of this configuration yeah, you're looking for? Okay. The online recording and people joining virtually, that is the easy part. The hard part is the PA system and making it so people in the courtroom can hear. If everybody's dead quiet, we can talk just like this. However, if there's a little bit of talking, you do need a PA yeah. system, and that's where we're, we're struggling. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. So I, I did look at this, Taylor. That's where I actually started um, with these options. So yeah, I, I can I can also look at these. Uh, Ron Stip has actually installed the rally system at multiple places, including the fire hall, and it's absolutely amazing. So I do like the idea of a rally pro. Um, and yeah, so I'm so I'm just getting distracted looking at all these. Okay, I'd love to, I'd love to see the specs on all of it, but do this. So Taylor put a link in there. If anybody wants to check it out after, I'll share real quick. This is where I actually started. Is their room appliances or their conference kit? Um, they don't make any themselves. These will all direct you to you know like this will take me to Logitech's page if I wanted to buy it. Um, but you can see that's their URL right there. Um, so yeah, the, the, these are definitely an option. So another reason why I moved away from Logitech is if I would like to buy this. So this one right here is actually very good. This is their next level up. They do have smaller ones. This would be able to do all of our conference rooms. Um, Jim, what is the issue if I throw three of these in my cart? So 
I think I just gave it away. As you can see, <laughs> side, you need a full, there's no mounting kits available. Uh, so if we're talking about the conference room, um, so, yeah. so all this, the tap scheduler, you, you would have to get three of these, the mounting kits. The kit that I'm talking about with Cisco has all this inclusive. However, if I go to check out, and this is just for one of them, so we'll say obviously it wouldn't be that much, but this is our big issue right here. Is yes. As a town, yeah. you're a municipality, we do not pay sales tax. Therefore, I just go online and buy this. Yeah. I you really need, need yeah, you go to state contract. I got to be, well, again, the uh, vendor I'm currently working with, um, again, they've been great. They, they have worked with municipality prior, and so our quotes do not have any sales tax. So I did email him, hoping with him saying that he did, he has worked with municipalities and he knew that we didn't have to pay sales tax. I'm hoping he's state contract. I'm hoping that we can use him. Um, sadly, his area code is Detroit, Michigan. Um, and I saw <laughs> a lion's flag in the background. So he's in Detroit. However, I mentioned the store lawyers and they said if they have some type of similar system, we can piggyback off of it. So we'll see. Um, but yeah, so that's why I was very frustrated with Logitech because I can't even buy them. Oh, also, lastly, I'll, I'll share this, and I'm kind of on a rant now. I am not able, due to our um, our permissions at Town Hall, to type in our credit card on a computer. So I will need to physically read it off to somebody. Right. So yeah, we what are. What technology in lag behind? Yes. So I'm hoping that um, maybe we all can look into some of these systems and come back next board meeting. And I mean, we can always discuss through email as well or get an email chain going, but this is a absolute need um, that's needed right now. Um, uh, as you can see, I'm on this tech board meeting and I we all will have to keep doing them until we get some type of conference room system set up, so. Anyway, so we'll I take your lead. Yeah, so <laughs> you like see what well, I would like to see you put forward what what has been put up as an option, uh, so everybody can turn around and see what the benefits and the features would be um, uh, going forward, and how we could participate with that. Um, and I'd be more than happy to look over your shoulder as to what you have in front of you, um, and moving forward and and see what we can do. I think we need to move in that direction. Is there a will on the town board to spend the money? That's my number one question. And two, how much money is actually sitting in the technology trust um, that could be utilized to do this this transformation for the town? you have any idea? Nope, that's why I'm writing it right now. I will check. Okay, all right. And how far down the road have we gone on the, the digitation of logins or not login but the keying for the town hall and the different doors how far how far are gone we're, we're ahead are we conference rooms are done everything's done except the external doors and i stopped briefly in today and they were doing pete's office so we're checking a lot i shouldn't say so in the courtroom i guess those are the big ones the the, the external doors um still need to be completed the courtroom needs to be completed and the uh, airlock doors to get to courts and accounting and that's that area. So they really only have a couple more to go. Super. Yeah. And again, we're coming up with a system where we'll have, you know, whoever chairman of the board is, we'll have that key fob. Um, they'll have access at certain uh, during a certain time period of we'll say 6.30 to 8.30 or 6.30 to 9.30 to unlock the doors uh, on that. Scheduled night. Like it. Okay. Um, I kind of alluded to it as well. Uh, the town is, uh, I'm trying to just kind of get the town caught up with the times. So outside of looking at this conference room kit, I would really appreciate it if we could look into um, what software is offered by government, offered for government solutions. Um, trying to think of one that was, let me check it. I think it was called ClearGov. Um, I know Joe Spinella said on a meeting over a year ago about this. Do you have any idea, Joe, what it was called? One second. Yep, it is ClearGov. 
Clear Gov is one of them. This is more towards, um, I'll share as well so you can take a look. I know I've showed it to you guys before. Um, there's a couple of them. This is more for budgeting and accounting. Um, but I just would like to um, just kind of take a look at what is out there. What, what can we help our, you know, our accounting department? What can we help our town clerk department? What can we help, you know, code enforcement? You, I, I, I'm just under the impression that there's no solid, like solid software being used by all the departments. And I know they're out there. Um, I, I just feel that we could really update a lot of what we do um, and just kind of get caught up in the times. Um, yeah, I think, I think when we, um, when we looked at this, they had a little bit of a, I, I want to say sticker shock. It was a, it was one, it was a one time 7,000 to set up and then it was 25 K a year was what the quote was back then, <clears throat> but it does do a ton of things. 70, 70, 70,000 the first year. And then yeah. the license for each year was $25,000 a year. Okay. So Christian, you're going, you're going to the association of towns uh, in February, right? Oh, and I've been telling everybody that that's all the, the booths are, are all this yeah. type of software. And I got my notebook and I am going to, only focus on that really um because these are definitely solutions that i would like to bring forward okay there's two things you're going to uh, obviously from this point yes there's, there's two things you really need to start looking at on your your list of things to do one is look at the conference softwares that are going on because there, there'll be a number of booths there for that and then this one as well so i would think pursue that one pretty heavily uh for us when you go there is that something that anybody can attend or no, it's really the elected officials um, or who the town has turned around and budgeted for going. Uh, I think, Christian, you're down as a delegate, right, to the convention? I am. So, last year, I'm a delegate this year, so I have to do that. I have to stick okay. around and stay and vote on that thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. For those that don't know, every single year, there's a meeting in New York City. It's uh, three days long, and it's just just seminars on everything town related. I mean, what the seeker process is, what's going on with volunteer firefighters, you name it. And there's every, I mean, I don't, I'm sure people have been to these. Uh, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but they have, you know, five conference rooms at all times going with different subjects. So you can pick and choose what you want to attend. And this is going to be what I'm focusing on as well as they have all the vendors from across the, you know, across the state, they on really the vendors are from across the country, but yeah, they they have over a hundred booths that you just walk through and look at. I got a very nice pair of socks last year, so. <laughs> and they're all on state contract too. That's yeah, they're all, they're all on state contract. Actually, I won a uh, drawing for the Apple Watch. I was very happy about that. Did not go with their services though, so I feel bad. <laughs> all right. Um, so yeah, th those are my, my very, very large, strong two asks. If we can really, if I can get some help, um, from the tech board looking into conference room solutions and what software is being used by other municipalities in, in, in whatever aspect, you know, any type, any type of department. Okay. Do they, and, and Jim, you might, you might know this from your days in education or Bob, we have listservs. Like if I'm curious what other districts are using, right. I send yeah. it out to our other IT directors it, and say like, what are you using for blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Do, do they yeah. have anything similar in towns? Robin, did, did you say a listserv? Listserv, yeah. yeah. I know it's no, it's, it's an old phrase, but it just basically means yeah. Uh, 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 I know. Okay. Yeah, I'm, Don't I'm roll doing... your eyes, Christian. I'm old. <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're old. So Ed, Ed I'm, uh, I'm the project manager, and Joe is the product owner of an internal monitoring tool called ELF, which is Elastic Log Stash Cabana. And all the a majority of the applications in the bank, hi, David, a majority of the applications in the bank um, use ELF. However, ELF goes down, they won't be able to see their services. Um, and Elf, we had an outage and we were not able to let our customers know. And after the problem uh, management meeting, I was tasked with creating a listserv for emailing all the applications with the bank, all their owners. 
and it was just a massive headache and it went around all the teams and like we don't use listserv anymore we we found a different solution so it's funny that joe and i are laughing because we were trying to find a solution for weeks and we just gave up on it and went a different route so that's why robin it was nothing outside of that it was that's a- okay that's okay but but is there any way for you to to elicit responses from other people in towns as to what they use is there any kind of things set up already for you so one of the cool things about this meeting that's in it's, it's literally in less than a month so i'm kind of waiting to that but you get to kind of you meet everybody um the first night that you're there will actually be invited to a um, a night where we can meet all the local towns all the local towns are invited um i know our accountants they are in an email list all together in a text message group i know the supervisors are all in an email and text message group right, right. Uh, we don't have one for the council um because most likely because there's no, but, so- but the accountants the accountants might be a good one to yeah. to go to because yeah, it, it, a lot of that software they may not know the answer, but they can ask i and i right, I've right. about other other issues yeah a supervisor one would be good too i mean they should have the details from their boards individually right they can ask down the line yeah 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 it might not hurt just to get some and if, if sometimes the best things you get out of that is people saying do not get x y or z because it's horrible and we have it so, yeah. you know, that that yeah. sometimes is just as good of information. And to me, that was the best information is where not to go than it was to where go. So that way you can right. at least avoid yeah. the minefields and go right and say, well, that's off, that's off, that's yeah. off. And then look at the remaining list. That's how I always I was able yeah. to move forward uh, with products. Hey, Robin, most school districts still use lists or for whatever it's worth. Yes. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Well, we're with you. Yeah. <laughs> Most school districts move very slowly. You think town moves slowly. <laughs> the only reason that we moved as quickly as we did is because COVID hit and yeah. everyone was forced to do what they had to do. But yeah. we were, it was like pulling teeth before. And it yeah. sort of is now. It's a little better, but still, yeah. we all do what we can. All you got to do is have one of your partners get hit with a uh, fiber attack, cyber attack, and that turns around and gets everybody really moving. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> a couple of things yeah. can get you moving. When there's a will, there's a way. But sometimes mm-hmm. it's hard to get the wheel going. All right. Outside of those two um, items, I don't asks rather um I, I don't have anything else i don't know whether your board left off last month or if you guys would like to discuss okay i have a report all right um i have the floor so right now we've been working with hearing that to turn around and start moving our fiber project forward uh i have some good news uh we're still on the front end of the project um and a couple of great things came out today uh one uh they look and we were talking about actually sharing some of the costs to actually do our our um fiber project on grand island and participating uh from what i got today i think they found an additional grant for the town of grand island so that the fiber project they're going to build on grand island isn't going to cost the town of grand island any money uh that's really a great news that's massive uh, this, huh? It's massive news. Wow. <laughs> massive news. Uh, the second part is they have also agreed and found a contractor who's bringing the uh, line over to Grand Island, uh, across the Grand Island Bridge. So they're contracting that right now. So access to Grand Island Bridge to get the fiber lines from Erie Net over to Grand Island uh, has been negotiated and is going to be done this spring. So we're we're in line to see something happening on the ground uh, coming in 2024, and I'm pretty excited about that. It's only taken us from 2018 to get us going, uh, but because in 2018 we're looking at spending $400,000 to do something, and now looking at the county actually coming in to do that kind of work, uh, actually benefiting themselves as well at Grand Island, but also building the backbone for Grand Island uh, is amazing. Uh, so. I'm pretty excited about the announcement we, I just got. Uh, there's a letter coming to the supervisor's office in very in the, probably the next two weeks. Uh, that's basically going to spell out the activity that's going to happen. 
but I felt that I needed to get it to you to now, uh, seeing the information is brand new off the press. So uh, the fire project that we're working on, uh, and I'm sad Jim is not is not with us at the time to hear all this, uh, because he was part of the uh, the push to get that that project actually um, the need the, the need assessment to be done, uh, to set the foundation for what we're going to be talking about, uh, but is is coming to re realization. I think the new members of the board ought to get a document indicating what we had foreseen in the future. And then also uh, get out to you what is going to be coming from ErieNet on how they intend to configure. Uh, this will include a full loop for Grand Island, so it's not a just a um, a baseline. It's really going to be a full loop. Uh, so therefore, uh, this is more than we expected right out of the shoots. So I wanted to report that tonight. It's massive, Jim. Thank you so much. Where, where did you find this grant? Uh, the grant came in through ErieNet themselves. They actually found another one called uh, Connect All Funding, uh, and it's through the state of New York. So you got the ErieNet money that came in from the federal side and the state side, uh, and this one now is another grant that, that they sought out for. They Because we had done our need assessment and actually had designed out a project, and we had shown the numbers and shown the cost and shown how the town and the school would, would work together in such a proposal. I think that really set the foundation for them to go uh, ahead and present that information along with the updated information uh, that they had put together. And having this eerie, having the same contractor that was involved in doing a need assessment and then now is the same contractors working with Erie Net didn't hurt us at all. You know, it really helped us all the way down the road. So we we're very fortunate in how this thing has been unfolding. Is this so? It's not utilizing any existing fiber that's going across the bridge. It's adding additional. It's adding. Yep. Yep. The infrastructure, yeah, and you're indicating that the um, that would be no infrastructure cost to the town of Grand Island. Uh, and yes, there's a brand new line coming over, and it's another line. I think they're also trying to get the other line across the. Uh, North Bridge as well. So there's a loop that actually goes through Tondo, goes into the city of Tondawanda or through the town of Tondawanda into the city of Tondawanda to complete their loop there. So there's, I'm looking forward to their complete drawing, which is going to be coming out in there in the, probably in the next month or so. And, and we can still expect that at some point in the future. The last mile could still negotiate and work with ErieNet to get fiber to businesses and things like that. Yes, and I think that's where you, that's where we're going to be really uh, involved because we're going to be talking to Greenlight and those those organizations and helping helping ErieNet to actually talk about their talk about the partners and which ones we like to see happen on Grand Island. And of course, our infrastructure, looking at the town's connection, uh, we'll be talking to some of those folks as too to actually get the outside connect to our network. So to me, we're going to be, this project is going to be talking a lot about partnershiping that this committee should be in the middle of the conversation. I, I, I think it would be a good idea. Maybe this is something this group can do is the last time we really kind of had a push for fiber and getting the study, it kind of got the attention of some technology companies and they improved their services and options and service. Right. Um, and, and, Maybe not so much pricing, uh, but you know, maybe this is something. Since this is really big news, this is something we can champion or bring to the community more uh, than the supervisor's letter. Like, um, and you know, really just make it known that this is something that that's happening. The businesses can be excited about it. Bring more right. business here. Um, maybe <laughs> communication companies will take notice again. Um, yeah. You know, I think it's it's a big. Think of just what the study did. This is something like a, a real something we'll have tangible soon. Right. I mean, we put the sidewalk down Grand Island Boulevard. At the same time, we put conduit in the ground. And so that that conduit is sitting there empty. And that's right along the corridor from Webb Road all the way to Fantasy Island. And so to me, that really is ground zero for lighting it up. And so to me, I mean, I, I, there's a lot of things here that really benefit us that we can take advantage of, but we need as a committee to really take a look at that and how we like to see that unfold. Um, so, and I like 
I like everybody here to get their head around what was presented in the beginning and where we are now and how we, we maximize that uh, as a group for our community. So real quick, uh, Giuseppe, I'm sure you have noticed there's no fiber internet for residential um, homes on Grand Island. We lack yeah. uh, The reason to that, I'm just giving you some background, the reason to that is the extremely high cost of getting fiber onto the actual, the island. The bridges has never been a route because that is owned by the DOT and they did not want any type of um, secondary sale company for what's the way I'm like a public yeah. company to use that. This Erie net project, what it will do, it actually is running fiber. It's being ran by the county. So they do have permission by the DOT to run fiber over the bridges. And it's a fiber backbone to all the government buildings in Erie County. Right. Right. Uh, the reason this is very good news is we can potentially have a company come in and piggyback off that line and offer res residential use. So this could be our option. Uh, one of our options that we've been looking into to getting um, fiber to the residents of Grand Island. That was something I strongly advocated uh, when I was running for office. It's something I'm very passionate about. Yeah, I know a lot of people uh, definitely want to see that. A lot of people are think they're stuck with, you know, the same provider that everyone else has. But right now, Spectrum chose to triple the rates. There's not, there's no other competitor we can go to. So this gives the residents another um, viable solution. And I can then stream myself playing video games and not hit Beat capacity. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I did. Go ahead, James. Go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I was going to make another joke, so it's not worth it. Sorry. <laughs> I did notice that a 5G was being installed at the corner of Ransom and Stony Point. So the 5G uh, satellites or, or antennas are going up now uh, on Grand Island. So it, it's going to be, I think we're in a time where it's going to really competitive. We never did come out with a standard design that we wanted to have done with 5G. I mean, you might want to look at that. And so I would encourage people to look at what the installation was done at Ransom and Stony Point, uh, because that one, it'll show you what kind of installations they're trying to do and how the, the gear is being mounted on the poles. Um, yeah, that scares me. I'm not interested in the longevity of the internet all through satellite i'll take a physical cable all day especially fiber right. um okay. we've spoken to a few other companies um there is one on the island they secretly showed up last year um what's funny is they never told us but they were watching the town board meetings on youtube and if we approved a development being built they'd go in and they'd run fiber down to that part of the island just waiting for it so we are at the the brink of getting fiber it's just we need to cross the finish line and that Erie Net grant is massive, knowing that they're running that line in the bridge right now is massive. Uh, so thanks for that update, Jen. That makes me feel yep. Well, I'm staying close with them. I know I know Missy uh, Hartman really well, who leads the charge. So um, we talk on a regular basis at functions that we, we kind of really go together uh, to. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to know that we're in the front of the line and stayed in the front of the line and that uh, we're moving to make, uh, to be a, an example for other communities on how it should be done. We were, um, you said, just background as well, we were one of the first municipalities, if not the first, I don't know if we were first or second, to respond to Erie County saying, we want to be a part of this project. We are open, do us first. And we're big supporters of Erie Net. So we, I think we were first, right after she got appointed uh, as the chair, uh, I was on her phone. <laughs> explaining to me and I instantly interrupted him and said yes yes please do, do whatever you're going to do so um, Jim has been a big factor of this so thank you Jim for all the work you've done on that uh, also I, for, I was going to say I, to, for Giuseppe's benefit I mean other things this board has done is we've been in contact with the various telecommunications providers they've come to right. our meetings green light has talked to us you know um spectrum has others so we can always make sure they're they're aware we're interested you know green light has presented that you know as soon as grand island's ready you know we're coming things like that so um, it's it's green pretty, light, it's the first light we spoke to spectrum yeah. we spoke to horizon we, we're we're very open and we we need fiber on grand island <laughs> um 
I had one other thing I forgot to bring up. I was uh, reached out to by the supervisor because he was reached out to one of the students. One of the students at the high school has reached out asking, um, just basically saying that they want to go to school for technology. Um, if we have any type of intern stuff or anything we can help out or do. And, you know, being in somebody that was very similar, I love that idea. I just don't know what. So we can somehow help, uh, help them out with some type of project. That'd be great. Sounds good. I always like getting students involved. I was going to ask if Robin knew. What about like a Wi Fi survey? Just walk around town facilities and see how the internet is. <laughs> That's dangerous. Is it? But just to getting their ears. Well, I mean, you. Yeah. I guess you'd have to either have access to it or have an app for that. Well, all you got to do is actually have the student actually talk to his his fellow students at the school, and they'll get an earful <laughs> from every household, especially the gamers. Um, I know there's a lot of gamers working out of the out of the uh, welcome center because it's got great wi great Wi Fi there, and they're taking over the conference room almost every Wednesday uh, to do their games. So, and these are not young folks; these are uh, older or much. 30, 40 people, 30, 40 year olds that are actually in the gaming, they're actually doing their, their a day uh, at the Welcome Center. Joe's in his early 50s and Joe still games. <laughs> there you go. Joe. Yeah, when, when I worked at a college, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing I did working at a college was doing the, the wireless site survey. And one of the people on our team um, invented something which is now popular, claimed to be invented called war driving, where you just literally drive around and just neighborhoods and figure out what, what and record everything that's going on. So, um, yeah, I think it's interesting information to get a baseline of what everything's doing. And even if it's simple, just walking around town hall, this corner is a dead spot, things like that. Yeah. I think yeah, it's yeah. something that would be good information yeah. to have. Yeah. I'm, I do that for the Board of Elections right now. I go from town to town to town and look at election sites and measure their strengths and talk about, well, you better not put it here. <laughs> Because you want to broadcast back to headquarters, you're not going to be able to get your uh, data. But uh, yeah, that, that'd be good. Okay, talk about the student uh, coming in. I, I think that's a great idea. Um, I'd like to have the student have uh, Robin's clearance uh, because then we'll know what we're getting, unless the student is in a, a uh, Grand Island student, but or you know from Grand Island High. Uh, but it'd be nice. Is this the one that I didn't I send you one Christian one time or ask you because someone asked me? I think so. There was anything? It, do can we say the names right now, or do you want to wait? I don't know how that works. Uh, yeah, no, I wouldn't say the names. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about okay. Okay. okay, yeah, we'll do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would love to get any and all involved in tech. I think um, what most people don't realize is no matter what area you work in, technology is involved. Bank, there's going to be tech there. You're stored, there's technology there. I mean, it's really entwined in everyday life more than everybody really realizes, more than myself included. So mm -hmm. um, any, any type of learning as well is good. So super open to that. I'll, I'll, I'll try and come up with some ideas. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else. Anything else you guys want to go over? Nope. When's the next meeting? Yeah, so typically what if the next meeting would be, apologize. It looks like the 15th, but I already have, yeah, Tech Advisory Board meeting is going to be February 15th, 2024 at 7 p.m. All right. I guess the next question is: There any motion to? Uh, I'll move. I'll move it. Move motion to, to adjourn. Adjourn. Moved by Jim. Is there a second? Second. Second by Joe. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.